Hello everyone. Some young Christians were attending an international summer camp. One of the projects set before them was to discuss and explore ideas for spreading the gospel in today's world. The discussion was wide and varied. It included the use of television and radio programs, newspaper articles, notes in magazines and so on. Finally, when they ran out of ideas, an African girl stood up and gave her opinion. In my country, we think that a pagan village is ready for Christianity, or when we think that, we don't send books and missionaries. We send them a good Christian family. And the family's example is a more powerful proclamation of the gospel than all the books in the world. Hot on the heels after celebrating the birth of Jesus, it is only fitting that we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family. Jesus, like all mortals, needed the warmth, security and closeness of a family unit to grow and develop. From today's reading, Mary and Joseph had pressures imposed on them from the outset. For a start, they seemed to have been constantly on the move. I was reading recently that it's 93 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. For a pregnant woman, that journey would have been very hazardous indeed. And then, of course, the long trek to Egypt with a baby would have been frightening. Because of their experience, the Holy Family can identify and be close to all those migrant families today who are on the move as a result of war or famine or dire economic necessity. Today's reading says that Mary, Joseph and Jesus settled down in a town called Nazareth. Families, and especially children, need a settled environment in order to grow and develop as persons. Too much chopping and changing does them no good. In today's nuclear family, the traditional ties between the immediate and extended family have become rather tenuous. This is a fact of modern living, but it's not making family life any easier. Also, families split by divorce also fuel childhood worries. Herod was hell-bent on damaging the Holy Family. He symbolises all those dark forces at work in our society which militate against family solidarity. Recently, the Holy Father said, those who undermine the fundamental role of the family cause a deep wound to society which is often impossible to repair. Referring to lifestyles <coughs> which undercut marriage and the family, he says, The church opposes legislation that permits same-sex marriage or gives legal status to cohabiting couples. Also, Proponents of the gender mainstreaming theory do family life no favours at all when they peddle the false notion that male and female roles are interchangeable at will and not grounded on the God-given attributes specific to the male and female genders. And again he says, The family based on marriage between a man and a woman is a natural and irreplaceable institution and is fundamental towards the common good of every society. The term dysfunctional family is often used rather glibly these days. It seems to refer to them and not to us. To a certain extent, there are dysfunctional elements in every family. Families with faith, however, will be able to weather the storm when things get difficult. They will rely on the grace of God given through the sacrament of marriage. So, as the new year approaches, let us dedicate and consecrate our home life to the Lord and through the intercession of Mary and St. Joseph, may family units be constantly renewed and supported. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all. Oh.